Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. On today's Roll for Crit review, we're taking a look at a game that is a revised edition of a previous version designed to be a little bit easier and faster. That's right, we're taking a look at the game Quick and Easy. This is a new version of the game, that's right, the game is called The Game, in which you are playing cards with numbers and sending from, in the original, 1 to 100. In this version, those cards only go from 1 to 10, but they come in different colors. Now, in this version, there'll be two piles, noted by these cards that either have an arrow going up or down from 1 to 10, and your goal is to play the entire deck of cards, which will have values from 1 to 10, from an in ascending or descending order. Each player will have two cards in their hand, and on your turn, you will be able to play one or both of those cards onto one or both of those piles. You could put both in the same pile, or you could put one into each. And when you are finished, you will draw back up to a hand size of two cards. Now, it's not that simple as it sounds, although it is relatively quick and easy. You will have to go in either descending or ascending order, depending on which pile it is. So for the lower one, you must play a number Number that goes higher than the number that is currently on the pile. And for the other pile, you have to play a number that goes lower than it. It can't be matching. It has to be either lower or higher, depending on which pile it is. So if you don't have the right numbers in hand, you cannot play them to potentially either of those piles unless you have a card of the matching color. Uh, that is your one safety. If there were a red five on top of a pile and you needed to play a card lower than a five and you didn't have any in your hand, that's okay if you had, say, a red six or a red seven or any other red number higher than that five, uh, then you could still play it on top of the five. This is a great way for players to have a little bit of breathing room, allow you to survive until later on someone is able to draw a better card to place there. Because otherwise, if you didn't have that ability, you would lose very quickly. If any player is unable to play any cards on their turn, the game is over and you lose. You win if you are able to successfully clear out the entire deck of cards and have them played in the right orders without any hiccups along the way. You will have to work together and really plan out these numbers as well as the colors if you really wish to succeed. In particular, that color thing is really important because for example, if you get the red 10, for example, and you know that would end the line, if you know someone else has a red number, they could probably reset at least that deck, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a big part of this is certainly going to be the communication aspect of it. You are allowed to talk about the colors in your hand, as well as vaguely what types of numbers you have. You can't say, I have a nine, but you can say, I have a really high card, for instance, and try to interpret things from that. Or you can say, I really want to play on this pile. Please leave that pile open for me later on, that sort of thing. And that's really essential. That's vital to your victory, especially early on. And in particular, as you said, those colors, that's really the big thing because your numbers are very limited. You know, they're always going to be between one and 10. So even a high card, relatively speaking, isn't super high. Uh, you know, the tens and ones are tricky, but, uh, the, you know, those are the two extreme ends. The rest are going to kind of be yeah, shuffled around depending on what situation you're in, good or bad. Uh, but knowing that someone has a blue uh, and they go after you often will make the difference of just saying, oh, I'll just play a blue and it's totally fine now. I'm <laughs> totally clear. You don't have to think as hard about it. Yeah, it really comes down to knowing what the person next to you has and, and making sure you can try to chain that off correctly because sometimes you're really like, I have to play here and it, maybe even not the next person, but let's say I had to almost end a pile with a white card, but the other person's like, it's okay, I can push that back into the middle again. It's really helpful, but if if you hear no one has like a, that white card to help fix it, maybe you're like, I should really try to play the other card first and hold on to this. It's really trying to hedge your bets too about like, we've seen most of that color. Maybe we, I shouldn't risk that or maybe that should be the last card we play in the game. 
<laughs> yeah, I, this is, that's something that I don't know how much of a factor it will be for every play group uh, compared to the original of the game, which is tracking. Um, for for me, at least, and maybe this is just because my brain uh, can't handle this that much thought, <laughs> just in general. Uh, but I don't. I wasn't really going so far during this as thinking like, oh, we've used this red five. That means there's only four fives left in the deck. If you if you really want to take it to the ne next level and become an expert at this one, you can definitely go there. I feel like the original of the game encourages that more and maybe even asks that of you more to be super successful in this one because of the color matching uh, you know gives you again a little more breathing room a little more room to work with freely and the communication between players I, I think you don't have to be as stressed out thinking like memorizing everything that's come before it although that will help you if you can do it a little bit it is interesting comparing it to its older brother, so to speak, because in that one, you don't have the color matching option, but I almost feel like in some ways it was nice to be able to go from one to a hundred. You know, you had plenty of different numbers to deal with compared to if someone plays a seven, well, you've got an eight, nine, and 10 to deal with if you're trying to go higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, you know, there were also, there was also the potential to cut more things off in that original of the game, like if you if you play a 40, then, uh, you know, whatever number, and then someone the next person plays a 50, you're cutting off those 10. Whereas in this case, uh, you're not going to be cutting off as many because there just aren't as many numbers. So it, it almost goes both ways, I feel, in making things like feel, uh, giving you a little more wiggle room, but at the same time, because those piles are smaller, uh, depending on your circumstance, there can be more tension and having to worry about, uh, you know, if I, if I have two ones in my hand, I mean, that's a pretty, that could be a really bad, or a 10 and a one. <laughs> that's maybe the worst hand you can have in the game. Uh, you can also choose to play one or two cards, and being able to play two can be pivotal. There's a harder mode uh, that restricts you from talking as much about your cards and only lets you play one card per turn. So if you do want to ramp up that difficulty, uh, I think we found that one to be much more of a challenge. I will also add for this that, um, going back to the numbers, that this definitely is quicker, though, at the very least, with the lower number count, ignoring analysis paralysis, of course. Because you have less numbers to worry about, usually you know which pile you can or cannot play to re relatively simply. So that does help a lot. In terms of easiness, I wouldn't go out and straight up say this is like, like when they have like a kid version of a game. Granted, the art style, I think, sort of appeals to that. It still has its challenges, and I think if you're not willing to communicate and aren't very good at trying to plan ahead a little bit, you are going to have a tough time. So I, I, it is definitely maybe easier, but I would not count it out for those who are maybe used to these number-collecting games. Crits and misses for the game, quick and easy. Crits. True to its name, this version of the game is definitely quick and easy. With its color matching and smaller numbers, it is more accessible for younger players or people who aren't as familiar with the original. In addition to making the mechanics a little easier to grasp, the fact that there are two piles uh, that cap at a smaller set of numbers, either 10 or 1, does add some extra suspense as any turn if the card drawn or played is not the exact right one, you could end up at a dead end. Misses. The color matching is a fun new twist on the original of the game, but in the end, they still share enough of the DNA to be extremely similar. If you really enjoyed that mechanic of sorting cards by number order, then you're still probably going to feel this the same and have fun with it. If not, I don't think it's enough for you to actually want to play this version of the game. We're really starting to see a trend now of these small games where are all about ordering cards in specific numbers. I, I don't know for sure, but the game was definitely one of the first ones to do mm. this kind of thing. I feel like it and was the the OG. <laughs> I think so, but I, like, I'm not 100% certain because maybe people might argue some of the poker-style ca card games might uh, count for that. Uh, in terms of these, like they're for me at least, they're fun to play a little bit, but in the end, I, I'm not crazy about them. I had the same feeling with the mind. Um. You know, I, I do think this one is definitely with the issue with the art, which I know can be hit or miss or something. It's definitely designed to think for a younger audience, which is good. And it would be fun to play with them with that and do the color matching because they're going to be more attracted to trying to do that as, instead of just the same art with different numbers on them. But 
luckily, this is a smaller game. I just don't know how long it's going to keep your attention span going connected to it. Um, I will amend my statement and say Hanabi is also kind of, this is almost an evolution of of that idea. So and maybe those roots go back further, or as you said, even to some of those like classic card games. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not my favorite style of play, but I, I enjoy what they do with it. And I did really enjoy the game Quick and Easy. And it is, I feel like that Quick and Easy is... It comes mostly in maybe it's set up and like the speed of play. It still can be a challenge for you, especially again, if you do that at more advanced oh, yeah. m- mode. It, you know, this isn't playing Go Fish. It's <laughs> right. Not, it's not a difficulty issue for me. But for me, unless you like someone who really enjoys this and in particular, maybe uh, you have some kids, so you want to play that with them with something that's a bit more attractive, though I will say... The new version of the game, I think, has a bit more abstract art, which might be helpful there as well. I have not played that version yet. I've only played Mm. the original one with the red skulls, which I think is why this artwork has uh, some cartoony skulls on them. Yeah, this is is kind of a middle ground between those two different artwork styles. Uh, it's, I don't really love it, but it does, I, it does, I don't mind it that much at all. I guess maybe I like this one a little more than you do. I think this is just a, one of those games that's fun if you have even just two players, but goes up to five sitting around a table and it's not, even though there's suspense and you have to think to succeed, it's so easy to set up and fast to play that it's not going to stress you out. You can play this as a filler game in between other games or just do like four or five rounds in a row. And and sometimes you might lose like on round three. That might just happen. And you just go ahead, shuffle them, get started right away again. Uh, if, if you have liked any of those other games, I think you will find a lot to like with this one. If you are curious about it, of course... Check out the game, and if you've actually played this one, let us know what your thoughts on. Will this be one that will be in addition to the game on your shelf, or will it even replace it? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Yeah, have you uh, tried to introduce it to anyone uh, over the original The Game? Or do you prefer one or the other for specific strong reasons, or do you think they can complement each other and coexist? Thanks for watching our review. My name is Jonathan. My name's Will. And this was Roll for Crit. We want you to like and subscribe, and if you have the chance, take a look at our Patreon. Stay tuned to our channel for tons more tabletop gaming content. You don't want to miss it. 